Hey, good afternoon. Hope you're having a great day. We begin the portion of Ayeshev, where we read the riveting story of Joseph and how he sold into slavery by his own brothers and the whole subsequent events, which eventually leads to all the Jewish people ending up in exile in Egypt, including Jacob, the patriarch of the family. But it's interesting because in the beginning of the portion, it tells us how Joseph, who knew his brother didn't like him, but his father says, could you go check where your brothers are? And Joseph listens, and Joseph goes to find his brothers, and he gets lost. And it says, ish. there's a man that sees him, and the man asks him, where are you going? And he says, I'm looking for my brothers. And he directs him to the right place. And Rashi says, who is this Ish? Who is this person? He says, it was the angel Michael, the angel of kindness, the famous angel which we pray about on Yom Kippur who stands to the right of God. But the question is last week's Torah portion, when Jacob is alone crossing the bridge and he's vulnerable and it's dark and it says that he encounters a man and he wrestles with him and the man injures him. Rashi says, who's the Ish over there? Rashi says, that was the archangel of Esau. And the question is, it's the same person, same as Ish. It says Ish in both points. It doesn't say who it is. How come in last week's Torah portion, Rashi interprets it as as the angel of e, archangel of Esau. And here he interprets it as the angel Michael. And the rabbis tell us something so deep and remarkable, yet so simple. In last week's Torah portion, Jacob is alone. He's vulnerable. It's dark. It's at night. His brother wants to kill him. He's running away from his uncle. And someone encounters him. And at that moment of vulnerability, instead of helping him out, the person tries to hurt him, tries to injure him. Says Rashi, that's the archangel Esau. That's how Esau acts. That, when someone's vulnerable, he takes advantage of him. Yet in this week's Torah portion, when Joseph is alone, his brothers don't like him, his father sends him on a mission, and the angel finds him lost, and the angel says, where are you going? How can I help you? And he says, I'm lost, I'm looking for my brothers, I'm looking for love, I'm looking for someone to care for me, for someone to show me love. And the angel tries to help him. He says, that is the angel Michael. Someone who sees someone vulnerable and doesn't take advantage of him, but tries to help him. It's simple, but it's so remarkable. Because also, you think about this week's Torah portion, the beginning of the Torah portion, we read about dreams. Joseph has two dreams. And what happens afterwards? He gets thrown into slavery. At the end of the two portions, there's also two dreams, the butler and the baker. And what happens? Joseph interprets them. And then it changes his life. And suddenly... He goes out of prison and becomes the most successful person, the second in command in Egypt. The question is, what's the difference? And the rabbi said, there's one difference. In the beginning of the portion, there's two dreams Joseph has. He's dreaming about himself. He's dreaming about people bowing down to him about his success. That leads to failure. That leads to slavery. That leads to be thrown into the pit. But at the end of the portion, Joseph's interpreting two dreams of the butler and the bakeries helping someone else. When you're dreaming and helping to dream someone else's dreams, then it leads to success. It's so simple, but it's so important to always remember in life that we want to be the Ish, the, the angel Michael, and not Gabriel, and not the archangel of Esau. I read the story about this couple that was supposed to get married in Israel, 500 person wedding, and the war broke out, and they don't think it's the right time to have the wedding. So they decided they'll get married in America, but what are they going to do? They had a hall. They had a caterer, they had a band, they had a photographer, all these things ready. And these people need the money and people are going through such a hard time so they decided to go on with the wedding. Hall, caterer, music, decor, everything. 500 people invited to celebrate. Sands the Chatan and Kala. They stayed in America but they continued the party so the people could celebrate and have reason to be joyous. When you think about others, when your dreams about <laughs> are about others, then they lead to success. When all you think about is yourself, you end up in the pit, you end up as the archangel of Esau. And we saw this yesterday in Congress. We saw the shocking testimony of the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and Penn, who couldn't utter the words unequivocally that calling for the genocide of Jews is not accepted on their campus and his anti-Semitism. Why? Because they were thinking about the funds they get from overseas or they were thinking about how to be careful not to get themselves into trouble and the words they say. We have to learn to always be kind, to always be caring, to always look after those in a time of need, to be 
like Angel Michael, like the angel who came to Joseph in his time of need. Have an awesome day. See you tomorrow.